Greetings fellow detectives, Wizard Kitten here bringing you a new build in my series, Building Nancy Drew in The Sims 4. This is a series where I bring together two of my favorite PC games. We have The Sims, we have Nancy Drew, and I have committed to doing a Nancy Drew build, at least one from every single Nancy Drew game. And today's build is the Ryokan from Nancy Drew's Shadow at the Water's Edge. Easily one of the scariest, if not the scariest, Nancy Drew game. And this one takes place in Japan. So I got to kind of work with a style of building that I really have not had a whole lot of experience with. It was really cool doing um, this different style and trying to get the Ryokan to look as much like it does in the game as possible. So with this build, we actually get to see a large majority of the Ryokan itself. We get to see basically all of the hallways, all of the rooms presumably look very similar, so we can kind of imagine, even if we don't get to go into every single room, that they all have kind of a similar style. There's the lobby, there's the garden, there's Renteros shed, there's the baths. So there's a lot of just really cool locations that I had a lot of information for when working with this build. There were just so many different screenshots I could use and so many different places that I could go that I was um, really excited for this build because I wanted to try and get it as close as possible. And I'm honestly really happy with how it turned out. I think it worked out really well. I am building this build in an autumn fall file that I have so we have kind of like an orangey kind of glow around us it's also raining while I'm building this to help give kind of that spooky nighttime kind of vibe that shadow at the water's edge is so so good at providing so that was a lot of fun I clearly started off here by uh, working on the outside of the Ryokan. So this is the part that we get to see when Nancy is kind of walking up to the Ryokan at the very beginning of the game and when she leaves the Ryokan to go to other places in Japan. And it, just even this initial shot at the beginning of the game, it, it sets the mood so well. <laughs> you just know right away once this game starts and when Na Nancy is walking up to this really spooky and still ethereal, beautiful place that this is, this is gonna be a good story. I do really like this mystery. I think it's got some spectacular scare factor. I love the depth that it goes into with the characters and their stories. It's got some good puzzles. Some of the puzzles can be a little overwhelming, of course, but they can also be really well done in this one. So I think it's a solid one overall. I really enjoy it. I know this is a build that has been anticipated by lots of fellow detectives. So I hope you guys are excited to see this one and that you like how it turned out. You'll have to let me know at the end in the comments what you think. It was very interesting doing this interior here, the lobby area. We don't have a ton of Asian inspired build and buy items in The Sims 4. We're actually pretty limited. There's not really a lot. I actually end up using a lot of spa day stuff and a lot of island living stuff, weirdly enough, because some of the island themed items were the closest that I could get to a more Japanese style of building which was kind of interesting to me. I mean, Japan is in the Pacific Ocean and is an island in the Pacific, so I suppose there is some overlap, but we don't have a lot of things that are just like traditionally Asian inspired. So that was kind of a, a little hiccup that I ran into just trying to get the styles to match as close as I could. This actually um, was kind of a, <laughs> a creative little move on my part because when you walk into the Ryokan itself in the lobby here. The floors have, they're kind of this light tan wood color, but then they're accented by this orangey wood color. The lines are much more narrow with the orange wood color than what I've done here in The Sims, but I liked the idea of getting that kind of look across. So I decided to stick with this. I think it does end up looking kind of cool and I, I actually like how it turned out. I'm definitely okay with how it turned out even though it's not as close to The Sims as possible. I mean as close to Shadow at the Water's Edge as possible. 
but sometimes you have to you have to make some creative choices in The Sims 4, which is something that I've said in every single build video that I've done. And I think I'm getting better at better at that, or at least I hope I am, of like finding the places where I can compromise a little bit on the style of the build. But yeah, even finding walls was super difficult because basically the only Asian inspired kind of wall covering we have is a bamboo one that we got in Island Living. And uh, it's not even really Asian inspired, it's island inspired bamboo. So <laughs> I decided to end up using, I think this is either Eco Living or Island Living, it's one of the two, but this orangey kind of wood. And then I use columns and I use this wall decal from the Get to Work pack to try and create the the kind of illusion of different panelings that we have in Shadow at the Water's Edge because we have these beautiful architectural details all around the room and not having those just felt super weird. So I decided to try and kind of recreate my own. It, it looks a little bit different, but it kind of gets the idea across. So I hope you guys like how that turned out. I was, I, I was pretty happy with it actually. And trying to include all of the things in this lobby space that Nancy can interact with and that she can see in the lobby. Of course, we have over in the corner here kind of the reception area where Miwako hangs out and Suki. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't have a Suki in the game. I suppose I could have put like some other little robot on the counter there. But if it's not a cat, I don't know. It just didn't feel quite right <laughs> to not have uh, a Suki there in that form, because Suki is very much a part of this game, which is kind of funny how big of a role Suki actually plays in the game. So now I'm working on decorating this space a little bit. What I've been doing with these Nancy Drew builds is kind of simultaneously working on the exterior of the build and the interior at the same time. So I'll work on like the floor plan at the same time as I work on decorating. So I'm not really necessarily doing one room at a time. You'll see me kind of bouncing between rooms and the outside and different hallways and different styles. So it just kind of periodically changes over and over. Here, instead of Kasumi's portrait, I put um, this art piece with the koi fish because all of the portraits that we have are of white people. Um, and I didn't want to put a white person's portrait up there instead of Kasumi. So I decided to do something that kind of just suited the style of the room, kind of the, the colors that I was using, these beautiful oranges and the blacks and the warm wood tones. I tried to use that instead to kind of convey the idea, but that is where Kasumi's portrait should go. It would be fantastic if we had portraits of people of other races besides just white in The Sims, but we don't. So did what I could there. I end up using that art piece quite a bit throughout this build as well. A lot of, I guess a lot of the art that I use came from The Sims 4 City Living. So those are probably the main packs that I used in this build overall. I tried to decorate the reception area over here with things that they might give to the guests because I couldn't really do cabinets, I couldn't really do mail, but things like magazines or little lotions or shampoos or things for their room little papers that they might be rifling through and stuff like that. I did include the shoe racks because when you walk into the lobby on the right hand side is a place where you can like swap out your shoes. So I thought it was cool to kind of try and include that. And now we're working on what I think was the most challenging part of doing the Ryokan and the thing that I was most intimidated by when I was going to start attempting this, which was getting the floor plan right. Because again, this is kind of a unique game in that we see almost every single aspect of the build itself. We see the hallways, we see most of the rooms, we get to go throughout almost this entire thing. And it's a little labyrinthian when you're walking through. It's it's not really once you get used to it and where everything is, but my sense of space <laughs> and the sense of proportions of things was super, super off. So I worked really hard throughout this whole thing to try and get the rooms and everything to be the right size in the right place to have the the ways that the stairs move to be correct uh, so you'll see me fiddling with that throughout a vast majority of this build I also don't include as many rooms on each of the floors I think what I end up doing is 
four by four rooms and I am able to fit three as we go from the front of the lot to the back of the lot. So that's what you just saw here. And that's kind of the general style that I go with just based on the restrictions of the lot that I was working with. I didn't wanna go on a much bigger lot because I thought that this was definitely sufficient. It still gets the idea across just fine. The space still looks just fine. It's more than more than representative of kind of the experience that we get in the game and honestly you're not if you're coming here with a sim you're not going to go in all of these <laughs> hotel rooms anyway or these Ryokan rooms um nancy doesn't even go into all of them in the game so i figured it was okay to cut down on a couple rooms here and there what i did want to make sure though is that i had enough room for the bath space i was super excited to do the bath space because that would just be such a fun place to visit as a sim. I toyed around with the idea of making this lot a spa lot and I think you could get away with that. There are a couple things that you would have to add that aren't in the lot including like yoga and meditation equipment or massage chairs or tables and we don't have those in the game at all so it didn't really make sense. The lot is currently coded as just a residential lot so your sims could come here, but there would have to be a family living here. Who knows, you could even just make the Shimizu family and have them living here and then visit them that way. But I don't think you can sleep here. Your sims get mad at you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Your sims get mad at you if you start to do things in their house that they don't think is appropriate for guests to be doing. <laughs> so if you start trying to cook in their house, they get really upset. And I have a feeling, I haven't tried it, but I have a feeling that if you tried to sleep in their bed, they would come and they would yell at you and be like, this is inappropriate, please stop. <laughs> it's really funny. Cause like how many times have you, I don't know, especially if you're playing with family gameplay and you've invited over your, your daughter who has moved out, but she comes over to help prepare the Thanksgiving dinner meal. And I've done that several times with Sims where they, a child who has aged up and moved out comes over to help with the holiday meal and the parents start yelling at the sim because they don't want them cooking in the house and they think that it's rude but it's like I, that, that's what would happen if you came over for a holiday dinner people would probably help out with the cooking or something and I can't tell you to do the cooking because you're a sim and you won't listen to me and you're not in my active household so just let me do it but they don't. They're picky. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. A little bit of suspension of reality that has to happen with these sims sometimes. So now we're working on the interior of each of the rooms. And again, I decided to go with a four by four space, which is actually pretty small. They're pretty compact rooms. I was going to initially have these black um, little room dividers on the floor here to kind of separate the space a little bit and that's how it looks more in the game. There are more of the black lines, but when I did that, it made every single uh, section a different room and I was not about to do that because all of the rooms are exactly the same. It made so much sense for me to use the copy tool to start with one room and then make the room everywhere else <laughs> to copy it and drag it and paste it everywhere else so that's definitely what I did I started off with this room here because this is the one that Nancy uses and I was looking at screenshots so whenever I pause it's me like trying to examine it and try to figure out what I should do but each of the rooms has it's more of a closet space but I wouldn't be able to fit an actual closet in here so I use these big armoire wardrobe type things from the discover university pack to kind of simulate those same wardrobes. And the way the game works is that when you initially walk into the room, you have a seating area. There's like a little table and a couple little blue um, seats that you can sit at. So I decided to do that just for all of the rooms. At nighttime, the tables are folded up, put away, so are the little chairs, and a bed mat is put out, which I think is super cool. I love that they had that detail in the game itself. I would not have been able to replicate that in The Sims 4 because we do not have a kind of bed that would look like that. We only have raised up beds, you know, standard Western style type beds. Um, 
with frames and everything and that <laughs> I figured that would look kind of weird just hanging out in the middle of the room but having this coffee table here and having the little blue stools here from spa day I thought actually kind of had the look going pretty well so I was pretty happy with that and then the rooms that overlook the garden each have these cool little balconies where some spooky stuff happens, but at least they have the fun little balconies, so that's nice. I did actually forget to furnish the balconies. I feel like they both have, or all of them have, a table and chair set on the balcony where you could actually like sit out there and um, hang out, but I forgot to put that in there. But this middle section is going to end up being the garden, which is another area for this build that I was super excited to try and recreate because the garden in this game is stunning. It's so pretty. I love the water feature in the middle. I love all of the plants. I love the lighting in it and the mood. It's just, and the music that plays when you're in there. It's just, it's fantastic. I absolutely love the garden. So I did my best with it. Um, again, we don't have a ton of Asian inspired build by items and we really don't have a ton of Asian inspired plants. So it made landscaping a little bit tricky. I kind of did some research and tried to figure out what Japanese plants look like. Part of this too is me just um, having a really limited knowledge of um, Japan and what it actually looks like because I've never been to Japan and um, my experience with it is basically only through like movies or TV shows and when I was watching those I wasn't paying attention to the landscaping and what the plants look like so I did some googling tried to figure out what kind of flora I would include in here how I would get the fountain to look and everything because I wanted to try and get it as close as possible. And what I ended up learning, at least from my research, was that a lot of Japanese plants, or the flowers at least, tend to have kinds of red and pink and orange. They tend to have like really bright colors. So I tried to go for that with a lot of the flowers that I end up choosing. The fountain ends up being um, much smaller than it feels like in the game. But again, for the Sims recreation, I think it makes sense given the scale of everything else going on in the game. It feels more manageable this way in the Sims. I am still able to include Rentro's little shed. It isn't accessible because I would need to put stairs to get it up to the door. Um, I did put a woodworking table in there as well, but again, it's not accessible. So if you wanted <laughs> this little shed to be accessible, you might need to move it around a little bit or you could take out the woodworking table out and just not have the shed. So there there are a couple of options, but this is Rentero's little area here. I made sure to turn the lights off. So now it's nighttime so that I could really um, try to get it as close as possible. One thing that we did have that actually looks very similar to the game is this beautiful like dogwood tree. I have no idea if that's anywhere close. I'm sure it's like a Japanese cherry blossom tree in the game. In The Sims 4, this one is called a dogwood tree, but the little white flowers on it felt very similar to the one in the game. So I was really happy to use that as a feature and have that in the corner over there. It's a big old tree though, so I had to size it down and kind of work around it. It's in the middle of the path, that's fine. You know, trees can do that. They can grow through paths. And I wanted to have a really cool bridge here. And it's kind of weird that you can't have foundation over a bridge or over a fountain. I was a little bit confused by that. So I ended up looking through the debug menu to try and find a bridge that would work. I found one that looks fine. I really wanted a red bridge that was Japanese style that actually looked like the one in the game. There was this one that was kind of broken, but you don't want a broken bridge. I mean, that looks like a hazard, especially on the left-hand side there. <laughs> Nancy, instead of walking peacefully across the bridge, would just fall off of it and like break her ankle or something or careen right through Rentero's doors and fall through the, <laughs> the shed there. So I ended up using this little brick bridge instead. And it's red, so I mean, it gets the idea close enough and it fits if I were to size it down. And it, because it's a debug item, it doesn't uh, interfere too much with everything. It's, Sims will walk through it and everything. So I think it ended up working okay again within the, within the restrictions of the game. I'm really happy with how this turned out personally. So now we're getting ready to start adding in all of the landscaping that I mentioned. I did a lots of big leafy plants, so uh, 
any of the greens that I used had kind of like really big flowy leaves and then all of the flowers that I used were either in that like orange red pink family so very bright I thought about using some other trees size down they just ended up being massive this is actually a banana tree again I used a lot of things from the island living pack because the colors and the styles were sort of close to what I was going for kind of lining the path here I think this garden is probably my favorite location in the game it's hard to choose because there are so many beautiful locations in shadow at the water's edge I think that's easily one of the highest points of this mystery beyond the scare factor being so fantastic is that the the locations are so beautifully designed and they're very very memorable even the places outside of the Ryokan, like the tech expo that we can go to and yumi's apartment and the pachinko parlor they just they have a lot of character to them and it feels like a lot of thought was really put into them so it's really hard to choose a favorite location from this game because i think they were all done so well but for me personally, I think I'd probably have to go with this garden just because the lighting is so fantastic and it it makes me feel at peace, but it also makes me feel on edge because I still remember that I'm still at the very spooky Ryokan and things can go very wrong very quickly. And yet I'm so comfortable out here in this beautiful garden that Takai has so beautifully maintained. So I just love that discordance. I think that's really cool. And the fact that a game can make you feel that way is super impressive to me. So I definitely wanted to um, do this garden justice. Putting in lots of those big leafy plants. I decided to go more full with the landscaping as well. In the game itself, there aren't a ton of uh, flowers and plants everywhere. Like you can see bits of grass. It's not just pure landscaping. But in The Sims 4, that tends to look better to have things really filled in and really defined, especially with there's the paths around like that to kind of follow the, the curve of the path and then have everything else filled in. Plus it hides the foundation a little bit, which I think is also helpful. So I definitely went more full with the foliage, but I like how it turned out. And I had so much fun putting these little lily pads in the fountain, these little lights. It's just a peaceful area. I could totally see Sims having a happy time hanging out here. I also put the little frog fountain there and the frog fountain is, um, it'll, it'll spurt water out of it, but it's supposed to kind of mimic the, the deer scarer bamboo thing that's in that location in the game. So that's what the frog is for. <laughs> I don't know that the frog would scare deer, but I mean, he's, he's an intimidating frog. He's pretty big. He's bigger than your average frog. So I might be scared if I was a deer. Can someone also explain to me how deer get into the garden? Is that just like the original intent of the bamboo thing and they don't actually have to worry about it in the garden? Because the garden is enclosed by an entire building. So I can't imagine that the deer are like walking through the front door of the Ryokan and heading out to the garden to nibble on the plants. I can't imagine that that's a, a regular problem that they have, one would assume. So yeah. I'm, I'm curious about that now that I think about it, actually. So now I'm moving on to continuing a few more of the rooms. I wanted to use, again, these city living kind of wall art pieces. A lot of them are a little bit more Asian inspired. That's the one pack really where we did get some of those kinds of items. So a lot of those wall pieces ended up being very nice, working out quite well. Very happy with that. And then there were a lot of other things that I had to make some sacrifices on. But now what we're doing is now that the right half of the Ryokan is done, or the left half, depending on <laughs> what angle you're looking at. Now that one half of the Ryokan is done, I had to mirror it on the other side, which is actually kind of nice for me as a builder because I knew exactly what I needed to do at this point. I was like, okay, I'm already halfway done. I just have to mirror this on the other side. And here we go. <laughs> I was definitely worried that this build would take me a super long time too, just because it is a bigger space. And I had to work really hard to recreate it as close to the original as possible. But because so many of the rooms are exactly the same, it actually, it didn't take nearly as long as I thought it would, which was kind of nice. It was just an enjoyable building experience. I got to make the Ryokan and have all of the rooms and really focus my attention on the detailed spaces like the garden and the baths and the lobby. 
and then the rest um, was filled in just very naturally. So I was quite pleased with it. There are also quite a few pace places that have empty space um, because I imagine this Ryokan being um, very symmetrical in its shape and very um, square or rectangular. So you'll like that room that I put on the edge there kind of closes off the corner of the building so that the roofing one would be easier, which thank goodness roofing is tricky. And this was especially tricky just because it's such a big build. But um, also just to kind of continue on with the floor plan and what it's supposed to be. So like this big room area um, that you see behind these other rooms is just empty space. And what I do end up using is using that empty space to help Sims get down to the secondary baths, the baths that Nancy finds towards the end of the game. That's where you can go to get those because the rooms themselves are too small to actually have like a secret passageway of any sort. I wouldn't have been able to put the stairs in there, but you can secretly access that room another way. So that's kind of fun. I wanted to make sure I included that too because that place plays a very important part in the game. And I've noticed in the comments too that you guys prefer to see basically the entirety of the space, not necessarily um, just the parts that Nancy is able to interact with pretty frequently. Like in the Golden Gardenia, I didn't put the attic in, and I definitely should have put the attic in. It was more like, I don't know where to put the attic in, because I don't know how to get them up there without having stairs in the middle of the hallway. <laughs> but I suppose I could have just built it without the stairs. Or a ladder, now that we have ladders. Who knows? I love the haunting moments that can take place in these hallways, and I love that every single space in Shadow at the Water's Edge feels like it's utilized. Like this whole half of the Ryokan isn't really a space that Nancy interacts with super frequently in the beginning of the mystery, but when she does eventually have to start going over there, all of a sudden there's like a scare moment. And it's just really cool. I just really like that, that it ends up being utilized. So it makes it make sense that the whole building was shown to us, that we got to explore the whole building, that there's a point to everything. Super appreciated that. And now on the lobby here, um, I'm adding in the final details that I didn't do before because I was working out the floor plan and everything. So on these tables, um, there are two books that Nancy can interact with. So I wanted to make sure that there were books on each of the tables. And then I just tried to decorate them with things that I could find that were more Asian inspired or kind of looked like they could be Asian inspired. I did my best. <laughs> I did my best. You guys will have to let me know in the comments um, what other builds you are excited to see. I do know that the um, school year is starting to come up for me very soon. And this summer, I have thankfully been able to maintain basically a full-time YouTuber schedule, which I've been super thankful for. I've been able to post uh, three videos a week and then stream with you guys twice a week. Um, but unfortunately, the school year is starting up again and I, my day job, I work as a speech language pathologist at an elementary school and I am going to be going back into school very soon. So my current schedule is going to have to uh, decrease a little bit until next, um, next summer again when I'll be able to kind of resume things at the, at the pace we've been going at. But I'd love to know in the comments um, what kinds of things you'd like to see, what kinds of builds you'd like me to prioritize, what other content you would like me to prioritize. It, it helps me out a lot to know what kinds of things you guys are most interested in, especially because I'm not going to be able to maintain a regular schedule during the school year. It's going to be more sporadic. Um, if you aren't subscribed already, now might be a great time um, and to turn on the notification bell because um, that'll let you know when I am able to periodically post that content. It's It might be like one or two videos a week, but they might not always be on the same day kind of thing. Or I might um, have a random stream here and there, but it might not be every Friday or Sunday. So having the notifications on would probably be um, extra helpful in that scenario for sure. Now we're doing the, the dreaded roofing. And thankfully we had a roof texture that was exactly 
similar to the one that we had in the game, this blue metal roof that came with Eco Lifestyle. I was like, sweet, that was easy. But then getting the actual roofs to work with the same slopes as one another and to kind of look nicely together, it definitely helped that this build is symmetrical. That helped a lot. And I'm actually very pleased with how the roofing turned out. It could have been much worse, <laughs> so I'm not going to complain about it too much. I'm not going to be too picky about it because I think I... I think I'm happy with how it turned out. I think it couldn't have been too much better, at least given my roofing skills. So there we have it. And now we're doing um, some of the landscaping on the outside of the Riacon. And these are areas that Nancy doesn't really get to see. So what I did was kind of just use the same landscaping that I used in the garden, just expanded a little bit. And then I used this original screenshot that we have walking into the Riocon to try and use similar plants that you can kind of see around as Nancy is walking in. I just, I fill it up a little bit more than other different areas. So yeah. It ends up being um, a very, a full landscaping with some nice like grassy areas in between. It's just not quite as um, sparse as one would see in Shadow at the Water's Edge. I am just so ready for the kind of weather that I was building in. <laughs> and I've said this in like the past three or four builds, but I just, I'm, I'm feeling it, you guys. Like this, this cool rainy day that I was building in is just so nice to live vicariously through The Sims sometimes. I think that's one of my favorite parts of The Sims is being able to escape into this imaginary world for a little while. That's honestly why I love the Nancy Drew games too, is that you can, you can separate yourself from your real life and all the stresses that you have going on in your real life for a little while. You can pretend to be someone else. You can be Nancy. You can be a Sim. You can pretend to be somewhere else. You can go to a tropical beach and hang out with your Sims. You can um, be Nancy and go to England and do whatever you like there. I just, I really like that a lot. That kind of like vicarious living. It's a very peaceful kind of, kind of feeling. And I think even despite the fact that this Ryokan is is uber duber haunted and is super scary. I think after the events of Shadow at the Water's Edge, it might be a very peaceful, pleasant place to hang out. I don't know. It's definitely still um, a little bit unclear how much of the haunting is real and how much of it is not, which I think is actually a theme in many Nancy Drew games. I think I like that. I think I do. I generally am somebody who likes to have all the answers and I like to know for sure, like, no, that was a haunting. That was not. That was the culprit. That was actually like a ghost. <laughs> but I think a lot of the scarier Nancy Drew games sometimes leave it up to you to decide how much of it was real and how much of it wasn't. And I think they do that especially with this one because it's hard to determine for sure if the culprit was behind any of the hauntings that were discussed previously. So yeah, you guys have to let me know what you think. How haunted is the Ryokan actually? And would you stay at the Ryokan? I think I totally would after the events of Shadow at the Water's Edge if I was reassured that it was not going to be haunted. <laughs> I don't know how you can reassure someone that, but that would make me feel better. So now we are working on to another area, like I said, that I was super excited to start recreating, which is the baths. So we have this public bath space. I did not include toilets anywhere in this build. And I just realized that <laughs> that was an oversight on my part. You know what I, you could do very easily? This hallway here that leads into the baths just leads directly into the bath and the shower on the right hand side. But you'll notice that there's that empty room on the left. You could very easily put a couple of um, toilet rooms with sinks over on that side very easily. And they could be um, all gender inclusive so that there's like two or three just separate rooms that could be used at any time by people. So that's what I would do. And maybe I'll even do that before I upload this to the gallery, just because that's kind of important to have on a Sims lot. You, you kind of need a toilet. <laughs> you also need a kitchen, which also is not included in this build. I'm, I have no idea where they keep the kitchen in this place. I'm sure in this build, I could have done it in, again, one of those rooms that has, um, 
one of those empty rooms that I use to just try and maintain the floor plan, but we don't see doors for those spaces. So I'm kind of at a loss as to where they actually cook in this place. Do they cook in this place? Do they cook in this place? I know we go to Yumi's bento stand all the time, but you would think that they would have food here as well. Hmm. Now, now I'm a little confused. That's, that's another fun thing I love about doing these builds is like thinking about the lives of the people living here. So if Miwako and Takai live here 100% of the time, where do they eat? And where do they go to the bathroom? Like, what is their life like? Do they have breakfast here? Do they always order in? Miwako never goes to Yumi's bento stand and neither does Takai. They really don't like it. They're not happy about it at all. Where do you get your food? Now I'm just concerned about them. <laughs> so now I'm finishing up uh, this intro bathroom space. So this is the first room that Nancy walks in and is traumatized in. I think we're all traumatized when we walk into this space. <laughs> There is actually a window that looks out onto the garden too, which I never realized um, playing the game initially, but there is, there is a window. There's also this little seating area on the side. I added in a bunch of towels and a bunch of the like fake campers. So you don't have to worry about laundry on this place. They're just the fake ones, that's fine. And they had a lot of rugs, lots of rugs of many different colors. This I was so excited to do because I just, when I thought about doing the Ryokan, I knew exactly how I was going to make this happen. And it was like, okay, pool. They have an indoor pool and it's going to look exactly like the baths. And I was so excited. The actual baths are even better in the game because they are open to the outside air a little bit. Like they actually, I think are open to the garden weirdly enough, which doesn't necessarily make sense given the floor plan at all, but there's open air. It's very steamy and I made sure to put these steam vents in the bath. So it like gives off the idea that it's like a warm bath. And then you have the showers on the opposite side, nice little seating areas all around the place lotions and shampoos and hair products and massage oils and whatnot all over. This would be such a fun place to come to and hang out in the baths. Again, provided that it's not super haunted. <laughs> That's my caveat for everything. Every place in this build, I would love to hang out in. I think it would be beautiful and wonderful as long as I'm not terrified for my life the entire time. Generally, that's not a feeling that I would like to experience when I'm on a relaxing vacation. <laughs> Let me know if that's the kind of experience you're looking for on your relaxing vacation. So, so this part ended up working out quite well, actually. Um, there's a lot of, I don't even know what the objects are, but when I was looking at the screenshots, there's a bunch of round drum looking type objects. I wasn't sure if those are supposed to be seats or if they're supposed to be buckets. I wasn't really sure, but I use these stone seats to kind of simulate the shelf that runs through the entire baths. And then I put down these wicker chairs and then a bunch of just other little, like little cushions, the, the little round ottoman poof type things that people could sit on. I'm sure they're waterproof because the showers would get all over them. But I wanted this space to feel really warm and inviting and just super relaxing. Like you would come in here for a dip and you would be super excited to lounge around and float around in that pool. A couple little decorations here and there just to fill in the space a little bit, but overall it's a nice minimalist bathroom, which I, th I think is lovely. I think it'd be really nice. And now we are moving on to the very last room in this build. This is definitely a bigger build, but again, it was nice that all of the rooms I could just kind of copy and paste throughout the rest of the Ryokan so it didn't end up being too super overwhelming. But this room here is the secondary baths that, again, Nancy encounters towards the end of the mystery. And this space I wanted to make super spooky. So I use basically stones and wall art from, from the Jungle Adventure pack. So it almost looks like a a temple or like a tomb down here with the the walls and the floors. I used this giant fountain that came from Get Famous because I thought it looked almost exactly like the fountain from the Ryokan and I was so excited. It even has an eerie green glow to it. Super creepy. I put 
cracks on the walls and holes in the walls and water stains on the walls and on the floors. Over here, I put this big watering can to fill up the fountain or to wash it off or something. I'm not really sure. And I try to include all of the the different like interactable places in this too. So like certain tables and then there's shelves down here that are supposed to be accessible to hold what used to be, I'm sure, towels for guests down in this bath. But this is definitely, I tried to make it spooky. I did also use the haunted lot trait when I was making this lot as well. So this lot is haunted and ghosts will periodically appear at it in The Sims, which I think is kind of fun. I, I really liked that idea of like ghosts showing up every once in a while. But yeah, just super creepy, super spooky. You guys will have to let me know what you think of this build. Where would you hang out in the Sims 4 build? Where would you hang out in the real Ryukon? Did you like the recreation? Do you think I got close to the, to the real one? Does it look like you imagined it could look in the Sims? Just let me know all of your thoughts below. If you liked this video, please feel free to give it a little thumbs up. Uh, that kind of engagement helps us find more fellow detectives. And I would absolutely love it if you would consider subscribing. The channel is super close to 500 fellow detectives and that just makes me really excited. So screenshots coming up here in just a second. Thank you so much for watching, fellow detectives. I will see you soon.